Oh, this has got to be one of my favorites. Want to explain this one? So this one was created for the Virginia Tech Carillon School of Medicine. And this was in 2014. And they sent out photographs and fiber artists could, uh, we, we could choose what we wanted to use, um, which photograph we wanted. And I was drawn to this one. It shows muscle fibers being innervated by one axon after heavy competition. Pink and green axons fight for the synaptic site labeled in blue and variants of jellyfish proteins are used as highlighters. So this was um, really, really fun to stitch and make all the fuzzies and the just the texture in this. And again, I, I was using some of my pieces that I'd gotten from London, some that I've gotten at Artistic Artifacts. Oh, Kathleen, way down there on the bottom left one, there's a, there's a green, green right there. That is this wonderful wire mesh that you will see in a couple of my quilts. Um, it's from Artistic Artifacts and it comes in different sizes and you can actually stretch it out and manipulate it. And if you go to Wire Mesh on Artistic Artifacts website, they do show it being stretched and in all different directions. Cool. Um, right. Lazy Susan of Life is uh, just a tribute to, to life in general. Uh, my Lazy Susan has um, acne movers on it, and then it has um, some bluebirds and we're thrilled we have a lot of bluebirds here in our current neighborhood there's good things happening like the bluebirds a bowl of peas bloom where you're planted there's a flat tire um there are oh fruit cakes and turkeys and good things and bad things so then we we go up to the red part and i had written words on here i was getting better at writing words and i colored them in so you can see they are drawn from the Lazy Susan itself. And I wanted to mention that up in the top right, um, the, that was the curtain fabric from the house I grew up in in New Jersey. And somehow I ended up with a good half yard of it and I'm thrilled it's on this quilt. And then our daughters felt that this um, tablecloth fab fabric below the Lazy Susan is very much one that we had on the, it's similar to one that we had on the table when they were growing up. So that's story. A lovely slice of life, ha, ha, ha. Yes. <laughs> okay. So here's the, the, the big dig. And um, in Tyson's Corner, when they were putting in the Metro, they cut down an enormous number of trees and made a huge mess. And I have, shown some of the um the traffic that was going by and the way they they put out cans and things and i have different cranes the huge crane is made with a zipper and then i think that's so cool so <laughs> the this these are the metal teeth or plastic whichever but those are the teeth of the crane what what a brilliant imagination you have annabelle well, it, it was really fun. And then look at the imagination on the wheels on the crane, you know, that, yeah. that um, the way it has an inner wheel and then the, the um, tread. Yeah. Tread. Thank you. Thank you. And that was fabric that I had. I've just been so fortunate that, that I've had little bits. I've worked at these quilt shops. I don't buy big yardage. I buy a half a yard or a quarter yard. And therefore I have a lot of variety. Bottom left, um, those are some of the tree trunks down there. And again, some of that wire mesh from Artistic Artifacts is there. And I made the uh, traffic cones. And there is actually a white Metro car, car quilted into this right there. That's the Metro car. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Now, now go to that, Tibet. Yeah, Tibetan Valley goes back a ways. Um, this was a class that I took um, at Quilt Surface Design Symposium from Sue Benner. And um, our 
God's son was in the Peace Court in Tibet. And he sent us this picture and I was just fascinated, just fascinated by it. And then had the chance in the Sue Benner class to make this. And when you stand back from it, it, it actually looks like there's a little, we'll do that in a minute, but while we're up close, let's take a look at some of the fabric in here. Over on the right, there's fabric that looks like a zebra print. And then there's fabric here that has lettering on it. And there's some cave faster down among the green in the, in the valley. Now, if we could pull away from it a little bit, Kathleen. Um, that's as yeah. far as, oops, that's as far out as we can go. In fact, now I got to find it. Um, okay. There you go. Well, when you stand across the room, it, it really looks like it has great depth. And um, I was amazed that I could actually do that. So it's, um, it gave me a boost in terms of trying to do that in the future. So, mm -hmm. yeah. This is um, our youngest daughter's college quilt and it has in it um, some shirt fabric from each of our, my dad and Bruce's dad. Um, yeah, that was Henry's, Henry's shirt. And um, so when she was being hugged by it at college, she you know, felt like all the members of the family were, were with her, even though her grandfathers weren't alive anymore. Um, I started doing a machine, uh, a stencil on this quilt and realized I would not get it stenciled in time because I was helping her pack for college. So I very quickly did just stabilizing stitches across all of the blank squares. And we told her it wasn't finished and I'd send it to her. And we hid it in the car and took it there and left it on her bed. So it was there when she walked back in her room from saying goodbye. So that's that. But you're, work, you're working on finishing it now, right? You got it back. Oh, yeah, I do have it back. She is out, kind of outgrown this one, and um, she has other quilts that she's made. Each of our daughters actually have made quilts, um, probably two apiece, and Emily is going to start her third next month. That's great. Okay. Oh, are the grapes ready? Uh, this was really fun. This was a challenge for fiber artists and we're using, um, we'd been out to a vineyard and made quilts to hang at the vineyard. And this shows the vineyard that my parents had, um, several acres. And again, I used um, wonderful, fluffy, woolly things to show the grapes and you have the crates where the grapes are being put after they've been picked. Um, and then the red barn has a piece of antique red silk that had been my grandfather's when he went to dances years ago at Cornell. And who knows if the men had a, you know, something in their lapel or where it came from, but I put it in the red barn. And that brick barn had been on the property. So it was right there next to the um, vineyard. I painted the sky with um, Stuart Gill paint, which is from Scotland. It's not available anymore, but um, I do use now artistic artifacts, liquid textile paint that would be equally as fun to use. I made the grapes with um, putting a piece of purple fleece inside each one to give them some body so they stand out away from the quilt. And then on the borders, um, each of the borders is like a little um, crazy quilt. It, it has um, some stitching on it and beads and buttons and fun fabric on there. Okay. So Bruce retired in 2013 and this is um, him up in New Hampshire at my brother's on one of the, one of the nephews, go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> is this a net? This looks like you actually printed a photo. Isn't that, you printed a photo, I, photo on a fabric, real, right? Yep, that's a photo printed on fabric of him <laughs> waving goodbye and, and, and I put the flag on it. 
it's not quite finished. I need some more um, something in the trees. And again, there's a little bit of uh, one of those color catchers up in the sky. Um, that's that's all on that one. That's all, folks. <laughs> that's all. But that's so, not all of Annabelle's presentation. Uh, Don't no, turn I, off. No, I have about 10 more. So flower play is uh, just a really fun quilt. I wanted to do something fairly modern looking. And I use some of that wire mesh. Um, there's a bright green flower and then to the left of it, that's the wire mesh from Artistic Artifacts that I could pull out and, and manipulate. And there's more elsewhere on the quilt. I had fun quilting it. Um, there are a few little pieces of greenery quil quilted into it. And um, it's just very playful, very cheerful. Yeah, this is a quilt called Nurturing Labyrinth. I, I really do love to walk a labyrinth. It's very, um, it's very, very good to meditate and just kind of collect yourself. The, the act of walking around and the repetitiveness is very good for you. In this pink ring down here, you'll see some of my circular type of quilting that reflects almost the labyrinth walking where you're meditating and you're going back and forth and back and forth. And now on the screen just above that, you can see the word prayer and the word meditate. And I happened to take this quilt to my next year class with Sue Benner. And it is, um, she said, well, you know, you really can't see the words. And so she suggested that I take a big paintbrush, and I did, a great big wide paintbrush. And I don't know where I have one. Anyway, it's about a three inch wide paintbrush and put fabric paint on it and very, very lightly went over the words. And now you can see the words. And I went on to the left and put more paint there meet and pass and just made it easier to see the quilting and other aspects of it. So um, that makes it more raised looking. This, this quilt is one that uh, traveled with the Spice Root Challenge and I got to choose um, black pepper. And I chose black pepper um, because our family all love pepper. And <laughs> it was used as a currency back in ancient times. I did some research on the boat that's the ship that's up at the top to make sure that it was the right shape and the sail was the right shape. And then coming down, down the pathway down to the town, you'll, you'll see um, quilting on those blocks. And then this, um, there are little paving stones down below on the right there. Yeah, and when I did the lettering, I put some black batting behind the letters so that they would actually show up and look highlighted. And that worked very well this time. So, um, yeah. And it's traveled, the, the leaves, the little green leaves down there stay um, kind of, oh, some of them are not stitched down, they have, fray block or fray check on the edge and they've traveled beautifully for two years. So, good. Now, Left Right Flow was made for um, Vibe Artists at Loose Ends in 2008 and mine has words on it, surprise, surprise, uh, such as peace and faith and soul and it, it just was was very special to make and hope and love and i put family names in it as well now the left side of your brain is more linear so the left side of this quilt the person looking out is linear and then the right side is more um less structured and more meandering and on it i have um uh, just I have a little piece of 
that's from the champagne cork from one of the girls' weddings, and it just has special things on it. So that was. And the background fabric is hand dyed by a German woman named Heide Stoll Weber. And I was able to buy some of her cotton sateen um, at Quilt Surface Design Symposium. So that was lucky to have that. It really made, okay. Now, five artists at Loose Ends had a challenge um, making the wind chimes. Um, these are the seasons of the year. So these are my uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And um, they're two-sided. Their light is gossamer and they flow in the breeze. And at a show, these are hung from the fish swivels, fishing swivels that are at the top using fishing line and they're attached to a bicycle, the bicycle rim and there are 10 artists. So for each season, for each, you know, winter, there are 10 winter little skinny wind chimes hanging down and blowing in the breeze. So um, that's been, that was really fun to work on. The second one that we did was called Elements. So that's earth, air, water, and fire. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the fire there on the right, you can see one side of the fire has that effect and the other side has, has something different. And again, it's just very light. It's, it's been incredible working with this group. And uh, this, this was at the Mancuso show and it's been at the Virginia Quilt Museum and it went to Houston. And when, it was, when these two were in Houston was when I got to go and Bruce went with me and it was really special. So. Beautiful, just beautiful. Okay. Change. When Bruce retired, we took a road trip and we went out to um, New Mexico and rented a car and then we drove down to Texas to see family. So this quilting shows some of the wind effects that I made on the quilt, with little bubbles and little um, different curly cues and more straight and, and it just really does look like wind. So that's fun. Okay. This, this is called Hellebore One. We've had a beautiful Hellebore plant that has come back every year in February, March and given me so much hope that spring would be coming. I um, hand pieced this during March Madness uh, one year with all of these little pieces of the blossoms and then machine quilted it. And it went to, um, it went to Sacred Threads, I believe in 2017. And then it traveled for two years with their traveling show. And it, it has some really funny, um, fun, loose threads right in the center, which shows where the bloom would be in the center of the hellebore and some little French knots. So, and I did the whole life cycle. So there's a dead plant at the bottom and then the little cigar shapes or the little blossoms as they're coming out. My family have been fisher folk. And so my dad's a fisherman, was a fisherman and my brother and my nephews all fish. So I made a fish to honor, honor all of them. And I've given a similar fish as a wedding present. So um, that, was, that was really fun to work on. Fine spotted cutthroat, cutthroat trout. Say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, not really. Okay. Um, so th this was really personal. Um, in in the summer of 2017, when I went to see my mom and she was doing very very poorly, um, she's up. She was up in Peterborough, New Hampshire, and they'd had a really moist spring, and there were lots and lots of moss patches on the top of the wooden posts that supported the the guardrail on the 
road around the retirement home where she lived. So I took pictures and then subsequently, um, and, and some of it was in bloom because it had been so moist. So I have um, photographs and use them to make these wool pieces. And again, this was wool that I, or, or silk thread that I bought before I knew I needed it or wanted it. And now I have it. So lovely. Yeah. And this is a recent one, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm. This is a Lotus life cycle and it is a, um, from a photograph that Bruce and I took together at Longwood Garden. And I just find this Lotus fascinating because for years I've had the dried blooms, which you'll see down in the bottom right and left. Um, and when they dry up, you can shake it and you, you hear the seed pod rattling inside it. And up here in the fresh blossom, all the little purpley areas and the little red areas are where there are seeds in there. Um, it's, it's just very interesting. And then I made the bloom itself and some of the, um, I call them lily pads that go with it. And you notice that um, Annabelle's leaves are extending beyond the edges of the quilt. So that's cool. Okay. And this is the last quilt. This is my um, Kate star quilt. And it's, again, a queen size. And during the March Madness, I had pieced all the blocks that are on the wide band at the top. And there's another band at the bottom. And that was just very, very satisfying. I think I did that in, in 2018. Um, then, and, and I'd hand piece the stars. So it was put together when I worked at the Artful Quilter and quilted by Cindy Luby. Oop. Hang yeah. on, that is not the last slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh. so. Yeah, that's, that is the last slide. And uh, well, actually, this is the last slide. You want to make okay. art quilts also? Um, this is the website for Studio Art Quilters Association. Annabelle Ebersol is very modest, as you might have figured out by now, but she's the local Peninsula pod leader. We have about 20 some members all the way from Chesapeake to Richmond. Um, and we have Zoom meetings right now, and we used to meet at her house. And Sakwa has a number of juried exhibitions and professional art quilters and then people like me who just do it for the fun. So you can contact Annabelle if you're interested in joining. Great. And that is the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm just, um, I'm going to cancel the spotlight video and uh, we can run through a couple of the comments in the chat room here. Um, Leanne has a question about your June bride quilt. Leanne, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask it, please. Yes, um, it seemed like you had different blocks for different parts of the wedding. So you had the rehearsal dinner and somebody else had a bachelor or something or other. In Leanne, in each round, they were separated by a couple of months. So the, the bachelor dinner would be given to us in March and it would be due in June. And it was all done around a year or a year and a half. And you would, you would each get a block from an antique quilt and they could be similar blocks. And my friend had bought them at the Sully Quilt Show where they have people selling a lot of antique blocks. Um, and then the next topic was the bridal shower and that's mine for the bridal shower. And then the rehearsal dinner that I did was very different and it had a long table with, with chairs and it, it just looked, and I think I put my quilt block in the canopy over the table. You know, there was like a, it was really funny. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, so there was different blocks. You had a couple different blocks, but it wasn't just one big quilt. It was each person had different sections of it. Did y'all get well, together and display them all? Well, yes, they've all hung together at a, at a little gallery in Herndon and perhaps at the 
big Quilters Unlimited quilt show up in Northern Virginia as, as a group. Um, so if there were 10 or 12 artists and we each made four quilts, that's 48. Okay, so there are many compliments in the chat room, which I'm going to save and transmit to you, um, Annabelle, later on. And um, they're all compliments, and I don't see any other real questions. Um, just wonderful compliments and how great it is. And thank you so much, Annabelle. Um, you know, one of, Annabelle has so many wonderful traits. I mean, she's, she's very gifted, she's very creative, she's very humble, and she's a great organizer. And we just are so great, grateful to you. Her workshop yesterday was the best attended one we've had all year. So too bad for those of you who missed out. And uh, perhaps we can convince her to do it again sometime.